Mexico. He's going to talk to us about AI powered micro tracking for enhanced observation and study of biological behavior in biological research. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's right. Uh, dear audience, please, I want you to imagine that you are biologists and that you are trying to uh, reveal all the information that is hidden behind the, any insect or any organism that you want to study uh, behind its movement. So you're conducting your, your, your studies and you find out that you, the microorganism that you want to study is always evading your observations. It's going out of the, the field of study that you had, that you get with the microscope. How would you feel when finding out that after hours of work, you haven't actually got that progress? Well, today I'm here to tell you about a story on how AI is about to change the game. AI in, in working alongside other techniques. But before we dive right into the, this amazing universe of automation, I want you to make I want to make three promises to you that uh, by the end of this presentation will uh, will all have been uh, fulfilled. The first one is if you notice. Uh, let me go back a little bit. If you notice. Insects, for tiny they are, they move a lot. And imagine all of the information that you could get from the from uh, microorganism uh, movement. Second is that AI is here with us to stay. So whichever project that we want to work on, uh, we should always include it. And third one is a little bit whimsical, but when saying Eret Machetus Eremicus, which is the organism that I'm uh, conducting this this project for. Uh, when you're saying Eret Machetus Eremicus in a hurry, it kind of sounds like a tongue twister. So for the sake of my tongue and your precious ears, I'll use uh, from time to time the term microwest to refer to this tiny star. Well, now let me explain why Eret Machetus or microwests are that interesting to me. The, the microwest is a natural predator of uh, white fly eggs. White flies are uh, plague of many uh, of, of crops and the crop that they affect the most are berries. My hometown, Samara Michoacan, is renowned for growing the most exquisite and, and high quality berries of uh, national wide. Uh, actually, I wouldn't be uh, amazed to hear that you, you, some of the berries that you've eaten here at Texas come from Samora Michoacan. Now, uh, I, I'm sorry, did, and I had never mentioned that Eren Machetos Eremicus was, was a natural predator, did I? Sorry, I got I, I, I confused. Anyway, so the methodology to locate the, the insect, we need a technique and we use AI, JOLO, which uh, our friend Charles mentioned in his presentation, YOLO, or which stands for you only look once, is a tool from OpenCD, and it allows you to identify, to, to segmentate an image and identify whichever you want to to uh, locate. The way YOLO works is uh, an algorithm based on convolutional neural network, or CNN for short, and it basically takes the original image that you have, separate it into the three colors of channel, or GB, and uh, for a computer, an image is a set of, it's a matrix of, of uh, numerical values. So it uh, extracts those values from the image that, that you uh, inserted, and applies a ton of uh, automatic op operations like uh, convolution, with, with, uh, I mean, I mean convolution, which is a transformation uh, of, of two, uh, two matrices, the original matrix and a filter, and another uh, operation such as pooling, max pooling, ReLU, which aren't that uh, important to, to dip in. And afterwards, it will tell you either 
the object that you're uh, inserting is a microbus or not a microbus in this case. For example, we have a microbus on the left and it would create a bonding box uh, uh, in, on, the, on the object. And whichever other image you, you uh, take it as an input would uh, detect that there's no microbus in there. That was pretty easy because an eagle is too different, it's way different from a, from a data at Machetus Amicus. But take, for example, a fly or an ant. You, if, if you think this is uh, simple as well, that congratulations, because you're smart, but the model that you've trained is artificially intelligent, which means that it could uh, get uh, plenty of errors, and the amount of errors that you're gonna have or that you're gonna get at the end will depend on how well you train your model, how big your, your data set is, is uh, created, and we don't want confusion. Now, on the part of control, uh, we've used an adaptive control, which I, I really like because it's simple to understand, but quite sophisticated. Um, by the time I was doing the presentation, I didn't know that you had a good uh, basics of control. So I took the bother of explaining what's E, which is the error, U, the control law, and K, KP and KD are gains. gains uh, modify our, our system and uh, yeah x1 would be the error as it is the actual error and x2 which is related to KD is the difference between the actual the, the error at that time and the past error so it will be like a derivative And afterwards, we have already located our, our organism. We have co the coordinates of the bounding box, which means we have position. With that, we could uh, implement the controller. And now we need to combine all those things into, a hard, into the hardware. The electromechanic system that we uh, created is based on using two stepper motors. Uh, in the structure, we printed out in, in, in 3D. We used uh, an Arduino Uno board and uh, two, a set of two controllers for each motor, uh, which are a 4988, um, and a webcam, which will be our, our sensor, our feed, the feedback for, for our system. These are the results, which probably you couldn't uh, tell there's anything in there. These are the microwasps. And that's a big view of, of the results. We could see that the, the model we've trained has successfully located the centroid of the wasp, the head, and both of the antennas. As another uh, interpretation of our results, we have the coefficient matrix we, which we obtain at the end of, the, of a trained model. And we can see that the result we, we get in here is actually pretty good because we want the first diagonal to be greater than the other values. This means that the, the model isn't confusing on, on making predictions. And this is another uh, result. We've only used a couple of insects, not the Ered Mocheros and Mikus as it is, because we need to uh, have a controlled environment. And we've worked with uh, some other scientists from, the, from a biological center at Guadalajara. They, uh, after we finish uh, adjusting our model and, and our system, we would send our product or device to them so they could make their uh, they're, they're, they're proofs. That's a spider and we're trying to, to follow it. We can see by the green dot that it's being well detected and it would always try to maintain it into the, in the origin. The distance in X and the distance in Y are in pixels and they, are, they will always try to, to maintain the, the value of zero. 
Okay, so uh, some of the problems that we found on our device is that are that uh, we could only identify one individual at a time. But that's, uh, I don't see that big of a problem with that because following the objective of our projects, that's actually what we want to do. Uh, putting or trying to study or observe more than one individual at a time will be uh, confusing for the motors on which way to go. Uh, we need to be very careful in choosing a starting KD and KP for our, our project, uh, I mean for our system, because KD needs to be significantly um, smaller than KP, because KD affects velocity of the motors and KP in the, the position. Um, another thing that we thought is that we need to create a friendlier design for our device, because we some of the uh, tests that we've done with some microscopes uh, that they that there's a wide range of microscopes. Some of them have a wider space between the optics, and that could allow us to insert our device. Some of it don't. Uh, and again, large data sets are always required for for a good uh, prediction. As a conclusion, we've. We know what are the, those uh, fields we need to get better at, and this project has taught us that no matter uh, which field of, of engineering you're, you're uh, studying, you could always apply new techniques to, to some projects, I mean to some um, instruments that are already uh, useful, such as a microscope. Um, with that, I want, you, I, want, I want to acknowledge my team these are my assessors, such a qualified and, and wonderful individuals. And the ones uh, below are my, my teammates. With that, we'll be happy to answer any of your questions.